quite some great software engineers suggest to use Mediator to build a loosely coupled architecture. Of course, I fully agree with the benefits of loosely coupled architectures, but what about the clean architecture? Does Mediator fit into its principles and rules? Or are we going to marry a library we better should not? Here is an example. This ASP.NET controller receives web requests to compute a weather forecast. But instead of calling the respective application logic directly, it sends a specific request to Mediator. The Mediator library then finds the respective application logic, the handler, and then forwards the request to that class. Once the weather forecast is computed, this handler returns it to Mediator, which returns it to the controller. If we analyze the dependencies of these classes, we see that of course the forecast controller has a dependency to Mediator through its usage of the iMediator interface. But also the forecast request as well as the forecast handler have dependencies to the Mediator library due to the interfaces they implement. As we can see from the color coding, these dependencies create a dependency from the use cases layer to the frameworks layer in the clean architecture, which is clearly violating the dependency rule. Let's look at another example I have found in some tutorials. This registration application service located in the use cases layer handles new registrations to the newsletter feature of this application. The service uses the mediator library to publish some domain event to multiple receivers. Such receivers could be for example a service sending a welcome email or another service collecting data for some business analytics. To make this work, also the domain event has to implement some mediator interface. If we analyze the dependencies of these classes, we see that the registration application service located in the use cases layer and the registration succeeded domain event located in the domain layer or the entities layer both have dependencies to the mediator library due to the interfaces these classes implement. This design of course creates again a violation to the dependency rule of the clean architecture. Now you might argue that I'm over-engineering it and that it is important to be pragmatic. And I definitely see this point. However, there are cases where the pragmatic solution is not the best one. I shared some arguments in this blog post and if you are interested, you are invited to read it and of course to share your opinions in the comments. For the purpose of this video, Let's imagine a software project where marrying the Mediator library is not a reasonable design choice. So which alternatives do we have? A classic approach in clean architecture to integrate a third-party library without violating the dependency rule is the adapter pattern. We simply define our own interfaces and provide an implementation in the frameworks layer which adapts the third-party library to the project-specific interfaces. In order to create a complete adapter for the Mediator library, we have to consider three aspects. The iMediator interface used to send requests and notifications. The iRequest and iNotification interfaces used to mark such request and notification objects. And the iRequest handler and iNotification handler interfaces required by Mediator to locate the handlers and to deliver such requests and notifications. For demo purpose, I decided to create a new assembly for the interfaces as well as the implementation of our Mediator adapter. We start with creating our own iMediator interface. We call it iApplicationMediator. The required APIs we simply copy from the original iMediator interface. So we go to the forecast controller. From here we navigate to the send API. Copy this one over to our application mediator interface. And we do the same with the registration application service. Here we find the iMediator publish API. We navigate to this one and copy it as well. We could now create a new class which implements this interface and simply forwards all the calls to the mediator library. But with the help of the IntelliSense, we immediately realize that our interface has direct dependencies to the Mediator library due to the markup interfaces iRequest as well as iNotification. So we need to fix that first. I did some research to figure out if Mediator could also work without such markup interfaces. I finally found this post on Stack Overflow, which also has the following interesting answer. This approach looks quite promising. So let's develop our adapter into this direction. First, let's remove the markup interfaces from the Mediator library. 
we can simply remove the constraint here and allow notifications of any type. Let's do the same with the iRequest interface. We simply allow any type here, T request. To make this work, we also have to specify the request type here as generic parameter. In the next step, we have to provide our own notification and request handler interfaces. Now let's use the adapter interfaces instead of the interfaces from Mediator Library. We start in the Forecast Controller and replace iMediator with iApplicationMediator. We do here the same. And we now have to adapt the API and specify the request type and the response type explicitly. Now the controller is free from any Mediator Library dependency and we can remove this using. Let's move on to the Use Cases layer and adapt the forecast handler as well. We remove the using and we see that we have to adapt the request handler interface to iApplicationRequestHandler. And that's all what we need to do in this class. For the forecast request, we simply remove the markup interface from Mediator Library. Now let's quickly adapt all the other classes. Newsletter controller, requires the application mediator. And also here we have to specify the request type and the response type explicitly. Let's look up the response type from the respective handler, which is the registration application service. This implementation doesn't return a real return type, it returns unit, which is a small struct defined by mediator library representing a void type. We need to provide such a type from our adapter as well. So let's create one. This type is a simple class, which only allows one instance. So we make the constructor private and provide a public static read-only field called value, which returns the only valid value of this type. Okay, let's go back to the registration application service. Here we could later use our unit implementation. Let's go back to the newsletters controller. This is where we stopped. And we add our unit type here. Okay, now let's go to the registration application service. We use the application request handler here. Remove the mediator using and replace it with our own using. This shows us that we also have to replace this interface. Yes, well. And that's it. From the registration request, we simply remove the markup interface. So we can remove the using as well. Next, we have a registration succeeded domain event handler. We remove the using again and replace here the notification handler with the application notification handler. Add our using. That's it. And one more adaption. Another registration succeeded domain event handler. Same procedure, we change it to the application notification handler, remove the mediator using, and one last change is required, which is the registration succeeded domain event itself, where we simply remove the markup interface. If we now search the project for mediator, we see that it is only used by the program CS. Okay. Now it's time to provide implementations for our adapter interfaces. Let's start by creating an implementation of the iApplicationMediator interface. We create a new class and we call it MediatorAdapter. This class implements iApplicationMediator and it also requires the actual mediator interface as dependency. To implement these APIs, we simply forward each call to the mediator library. And here as well. As we can see, it doesn't work that easily, as mediator requires those markup interfaces. So we need to create adapters for the notification object and the request object as well. So we create a notification adapter and also a request adapter. 
Now let's generate these classes and make sure we implement the proper markup interfaces. Let's convert this field into a property because we need to access this value later on. Let's finish the implementation of the request adapter as well. We have to implement iRequest and we also need a constructor. Let's generate one with properties. Let's change that to value for consistency reasons and the property name as well. Okay, the implementation of our mediator adapter is completed. Two more things are missing to make the overall adapter implementation complete. One is an adapter between our iApplication notification handler and the iNotification handler interface from mediator library. I have prepared such an implementation already. This adapter implements the interface from mediator and gets a set of objects implementing our iApplication notification handler injected through the constructor, preferably through the dependency injection container. When this API gets called by mediator library, we simply forward the request to all our handlers we got injected through the constructor. And a similar adapter implementation we need for the iRequest handler. And I have prepared that one already as well. Here we have the request handler adapter. It implements the iRequest handler interface from mediator library. And it again gets an implementation of our interface iAdapter request handler injected through the constructor. For this adapter, only exactly one implementation is supported. And again, when this API gets called by mediator, we simply forward the request. And with these two classes, the adapter implementation is complete. Finally, to be able to make use of the adapter implementation, we have to properly register it to the dependency injection container. First, we register the mediator adapter. Add the necessary usings. And then we also need to register the adapters for the iRequest handler and iNotification handler interfaces from Mediator Library. Unfortunately, this approach does not work with the default dependency injection container provided by ASP.NET Core. The only way how I could get this working was by registering each concrete implementation of a request handler or a notification handler explicitly with the full generic specified, which is quite cumbersome. The solution I have found is using a dependency injection container, which is more powerful. I found out that Autofuck is able to handle such open generics. And in order to use Autofuck instead of the default dependency injection container from ASP.NET Core, I have to change the code like this. At the usings, I need this factory. And I need this code here to configure the application request handler implementations as well as the application notification handler implementations to the artifact dependency injection container. Now let's start the application and see whether the adapter implementation works. Let's use the Swagger UI to send some requests. First, let's start with a forecast. We try it out. Simply send. And we get some valid response. Great. Now let's try the newsletter feature as well and see whether publishing the domain event works as well. In order to try that out, we have to specify a user here. That's just me. And an email. Let's execute the call. We get a success. And if we now check the console, we can see that two registration succeeded domain event handlers reacted. One logged that the registration was successful and the other one logged that some welcome email was sent. Awesome. We successfully used the mediator library in our application without violating the dependency rule. The clear benefit of this design would be that we can now easily replace the mediator library by any other implementation easily. But does that make our design simpler? Well, from domain and application code perspective, which is the majority of the code, there's not much of a difference. Instead of using the interfaces from mediator library directly, this code uses our own interfaces. If we look at the overall complexity of the project, this adapter implementation certainly doesn't make it simpler because we introduced another level of indirection. And finally, is it worth the effort? Well, the answer is, as usual, it depends.
It probably depends on the size of the project, whether it's worth the effort, and how much you value the independence from that third-party library. Now let's assume you conclude for your project that the adapter approach is not worth the effort. Isn't there any other alternative without violating the dependency rule? Of course there is. There is always the alternative of solving a problem without a third-party library, so without mediator at all. Am I suggesting to reinvent the wheel? Not really. I'm suggesting to evaluate alternative design approaches, which might even be simpler, more pragmatic and less complex than a design using Mediator. Let's look at the forecast controller again. Instead of sending a feature-specific request to Mediator, we could also call a semantic interface directly. So let's navigate to the forecast handler and provide one. We call it iForecastService. Let's copy the API, clean this up and also give it a better name. We have to make this request public and we can remove the mediator interface. We now have to change the name of the implementation and also replace the interface. And we can now again remove the using of the mediator library. Let's go back to the forecast controller and replace the mediator interface with our new interface. Ok, and now instead of sending a request, we call the API directly. Ok, we forgot to provide a default value, which can easily be fixed. Ok, and here again we can remove the using to the mediator library. So this design alternative of injecting a dependency can easily be understood even by junior developers. It also makes it much easier to follow the control flow and to debug the implementation. And it's still flexible with respect to exchanging the implementation of the iForecast service interface. Now let's look at the registration application service. Here we used Mediator to publish a domain event possibly to multiple receivers. Instead of Mediator, we could use a quite similar approach. We create a dedicated semantic interface, which is just one public API we want to call directly. Let's make this public here. And now instead of importing iMediator, we import a set of iRegistration handler. And we call the handler API when we want to publish the event. We remove the using to the mediator library and realize that we have to fix this API here as well. Of course this design is not as flexible as using mediator, but definitely it is simple. And if we realize that we need an implementation of the publish subscribe pattern, so a many-to-many -many communication, then we could implement a simple event bus as demonstrated in this video. Of course we would design the interface of the event bus simple and abstract, so that it can serve as an adapter interface later on, and we can replace our own implementation with some battle-tested implementation like RabbitMQ or Kafka. And what about cross-cutting concerns like logging? Is there an alternative to mediator behaviors? The classic design pattern to address cross-cutting concerns is the decorator pattern. And these decorators can even be generic as explained in this article. But I have to admit that if you make excessive use of mediator behaviors today, the decorator-based approach probably requires more code and is less convenient. And here we go. All aspects are addressed with simple design alternatives. So is this the better approach, to not use mediator or similar libraries at all? Of course, the only valid answer can be again, it depends. It depends on how you value the different pros and cons in the context of your particular project. But if developers say, let's be pragmatic and use the great libraries out there, I tend to reply, but isn't it more pragmatic to choose basic abstractions and simple design patterns than marrying a specific library, which might even increase the complexity of the project? And if you now reflect on the appliance of the dependency rule to your projects, and wonder whether your repository implementations are actually violating it and how to avoid this, then I recommend this video for you.